The Sharp Tank. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. And today, we got a real one in the building like myself by the name of Torrey, man. What's going on with my what guy up, what today, up, man? What's How up, you feeling, brother? Man? Good. Good to see you. I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. No doubt. How was, man? How long you been out here? Oh, I've been out here a couple of days, you know what I mean? Yeah. Tending to some business, yeah. um, doing some shows and shit, going to concerts. I went to the Lauren Hill shit. It was crazy. I definitely want to know what that was like, what that experience was. You know, man, I never saw like Lauren Hill and the Fuji's live. Yeah. I never thought I would because they was kind of all doing their own thing. So, um, yeah, I had the opportunity. Shout out to my man, Jerry Wonder. You know what I mean? That's my brother. And um, I hit him up. I was like, yo, I'm going to be on the West Coast. And he was like, yo, the tour's on the West Coast. Pull up. So I pulled up and I got a chance. Like, Lauren's set was crazy. Then the Fuji's and they had special guests. Fuji's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that shit was crazy. Nas came out. Be was the real. whole group of Fuji's yeah, there? Yeah, Eric Prize was there, Wyclef and El Ooh, Boogie. Wyclef. Yeah, 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 that shit was crazy. I to make sure nobody was missing. Nah, everybody was there, man. Everybody. Yeah. Then Be Real came out, so I got a chance to see Mokka Haka just kill a okay. man. It was crazy. Um, Nas came out. Who else? Uh, Wayne came out. Lil Wayne came out. It was nice. a crazy show. Was it, How was the crowd? Was it real diverse or was it like just... For sure. For sure, for sure. Me personally, I wasn't really with the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but when I looked out, you know what I mean? When yeah. I looked out yonder, nah, yeah. I was I was in the mix. I was in the mix, y'all. I was in the mix, y'all. Come on, I like how you do it. Like I was actually in the crowd. <laughs> nah, but, it was. You know, you know how West Coast. It is though, yeah, right? It's, yeah. it's a lot of people out here. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna see your black people. You're gonna see the white people. You're gonna see mm. your Mexicans. You some Asians. Like you know, it's kind of like New York. It's real diverse, melting pot type. Shit. See some Asians up there listening to some food. And it was wild Haitians, Singing of course. Yeah, it was wild Haitians. <laughs> they had their flags and shit up. Yeah, yeah. it was crazy. That shit had to be dope right there, for man. Sure, for sure. For sure. You feel like gotta ask you your opinion. You feel like Lauren Hill is one of the best in the hip hop game. You feel like yes. she's the best female, like she's, above a Cardi, because she was there before all these girls, man. You know what it is? It's, it's, it's a hard answer. It's a hard answer because yeah. she only really gave us one solo album. Yeah. Based off that one solo album, she's the greatest, yeah. but she just don't have an extensive body of work. Catalog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, yeah. the Fuji's album, you know, the first one was cool. The score was incredible. And then she gave us her solo. So based off that, I mean, phenomenal. But I would have loved to have more work from her. Yeah, Speaking man. of music, early days, getting into music, what was that like for you? Growing up in New York City, yeah. um, hip-hop was everywhere. You know, I'm a 90s kid, yeah, so I'm coming yeah. up. All the cars is riding by, playing that shit. Yeah. All the hustlers is in front of the building wearing that shit. They got their radios, you know what I mean? They got good jewels and cool velour track suits and shit. Good, they ain't cutting yeah. the shit almost good. like they yeah, do Yeah, yeah, good, good, good jewels. I mean, you got some good shit on, though. That's sharp ring crazy. Thank you, I appreciate you, man. <laughs> I just hate how these days they be like, they be cutting the gold. Oh, man. I don't like that. Yeah, that's the thing. You can like, feel the weight. You can feel yeah, like they can cut feel the it. gold. Like, I don't feel like they, man, they have something really just all solid gold, man. Right. You're paying these days, man. That's what I loved about Nip. Yeah. Yeah, Nip ain't really he ain't diamond. No yeah, he ain't diamond and shit out. He wanted that. Because, nigga, if anything ever go wrong, you know what I mean? We gonna go get our money back. <laughs> I at least got some bread. Yeah. That's why I like that pretty ass. Little roller you got on your wrist, no I keep, diamonds. I keep, yeah, I keep my watches plain because those watches hold value certain years, right? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Certain styles, and they only go up in value as the years go. Put diamonds and shit like that, that decreases the value. Of, uh, yeah, right. it depreciates the value of a Rolex. The chains and shit is whatever. These shit ain't gonna be. Yeah, you, you know you can't really get much. But the watches, I keep all the watches plain. Unless somebody want to gift me some. shit. Yeah. I take an icy gift, but yeah. if it's coming out of my account, we're going to play well, Jamie. If I'm not mistaken, maybe you correct me. Rolex doesn't uh, do, they don't do bust downs. They don't make bust they, downs per nah, se. Nah, they don't bust them down, no. You have you to might go. get a, you know, like you can get diamond, like they be having baguettes inside the uh, inside the dial on the face right. and shit like that. Said, but that's but yeah, right, but no bussies. So for anybody to come up and talk about, man, I got this from Rolex, like this bust down. <laughs> You, you like got it from a good jeweler. <laughs> That's your man. He might have told you so, but you know what I mean? Yeah, man. So, you know what I'm saying? Getting into music for you, what was your, uh, how was it for you? Like, you know what I'm saying? When you first got in, like, this is what pushed me to cross over and actually do this myself. Dog, I never wanted to do nothing else, honestly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, just coming up in the time I came up, in the environment I came up in, yeah. the more sound of the music, the style of the dress, the the language that they spoke, mm. all that shit was me. You know what I'm saying? Like, all that shit spoke for me and spoke to me. And so 
While everybody was like on some other, yo, I'm gonna be a firefighter, I'm gonna be a mailman, I'm gonna be a cop, I'm gonna be a gangster, I was like, yeah. I'm gonna be a rapper. You know yeah. what I mean? Did they laugh at you when they said when you said you wanted to be a rapper? Nah, nah. You know, because I mean, when I'm talking to my friends and shit, we all around the same age, so we all yeah. get it. It was really the older generation, like, you know, when you get into your parents and shit, and they like, what you talking about? Like a rapper, like, because you gotta think, it wasn't even rap music when they was coming up. So I'm about to tell them I wanna invest my whole life into doing something. That they just hearing about that never even yeah it's a lot I get it as a parent now yeah. you know what I'm saying I understand it but back then I was like I was super focused headstrong on on doing this shit yeah first song first song even if you didn't drop it like just something that you went in even just oh playing with. shit come you on everybody up. remember my first song this is so funny because it's a full circle moment come on the first shit I wrote was a like a um it was like um not what you call that shit. Based off of LL's booming system, right? He was okay. talking about the cars and shit. Yeah. So I was talking about my bike. Some real corny shit. You know what I mean? He had the booming system. I had the banging bike. You know what I mean? It's okay. Yeah, that's all right, though. It's that's all right, all right though. Because the full circle shit is now, you know, I work with LL on Rock the Bells and all that shit. So it's just, it was crazy that you took me back to there. Because, yeah, that was the first shit I can remember was the rhyme about my bike. So you based it off that. You said, okay, well, he rapping about his car. Right. You decided, I'm going to still keep it real. I'm just riding bikes. Yeah, this is what I, this, and that's always I what front, I've done. I can front, yeah, but I ride bikes. But that's what I'm on. Shit. I'm on a bike. A two-wheel a two -wheel pedal bike, not even a motorcycle. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Remember, huffy. Do you remember, like, the first couple bars, how you started? We're not doing that, though. <laughs> no, we're not, I'm, not, I'm not even high or nothing. Like, we can't do that. <laughs> That's dope right there, man. What do you feel like uh, what do you feel like music brought you? Like the music, you know what I'm saying? What did it bring you actually? Man, everything, yo. Everything. You know, like I said, um, the desire to do it, the passion to do it, all that shit was innate. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it wasn't I wasn't no other route I was gonna take. So it fulfilled me in that way that it allowed me to express myself and um, you know, create and use my and use my creative energy, but also just the lifestyle that I've been afforded, you know what I'm saying? The opportunities that came from it. All the shit that I do, people are like, yo, you do so much shit. There's no radio show, there's no acting, there's no ghost writing, there's no none of that shit without me being an MC as a springboard. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the shit that set it all off. That was a catalyst. So for me, it's everything, yo. And I still love it. You know, like, yeah. when I'm in a mood, I listen to certain shit. You know what I mean? Good mood, bad mood, indifferent, whatever. Certain music that I listen to. Um, when I feel creative, I'm writing some shit. Even after the, the Lauren show, I was so inspired. I started yeah. putting bars together as I was walking out the venue. I'm putting eight bars together. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. like that shit. So it never stops. But the music is everything to me, bro. Was there any, like, was there any other groups or outside the hip hop genre? Was there any other people that inspired you that wasn't rap influenced? Oh, for sure. I mean... I was okay just having talk this. About if you like yeah. the little rock man. I like, yeah, yo, yeah. I was just having this conversation yeah. yesterday, bro. Good yeah. music is good music. Yeah. It's genreless. Yeah. Like the dope shit. I'm gonna listen to the Hall of Notes. I'm gonna listen yeah. to Patti LaBelle. I'm gonna listen to Lufa. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm gonna listen to Duran Duran. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, all yeah, all that shit. So like dope music, even country shit. You know, I might pop in. There you go. And Leanne Rhymes, or you know what that's I'm saying, or, or some yeah, or some Shania Twain shit, shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Old school yeah shit. I'm, I'm old school nigga. Even my yeah. even my off genres is old school shit. But that's how I know you really came from the '90s because that was the people you named off. Them was really them heirs right. of people that right, was for going sure. on. You for know sure, like yeah, the Shania yeah, yeah. Twains, and right, all right, them, right. You know? right. My, no doubt, before Gwen Stefani left, like I yeah. listen to all the fly shit it's yeah. as long as it's dope music. A little bit of Black Street or Black Street, of course. Yeah, I mean, yep, yep. <laughs> hey, what was one of your favorite joints on Black Street that you remember listening to? Black Street, yeah. one of my favorite joints. Um, yeah. Joy, Joy yeah. is tough. Um, no diggity, of course. I no mean, that's diggity. a classic. Iconic. Yeah, yeah, Iconic. yeah, for Half sure. The kids ain't even gonna know what that was. Right, no right. Diggity. Till somebody go sample it. Somebody yeah, got sample it. Somebody sample that. Right, right, for right, real, right. For real, for sure, for sure. That's live though to know like you. Uh, you weren't just basing your career and how you m look at music just off of hip hop, but overall. For sure. You know? That's how you learn. That's how you grow. That's how you get better as a creative. You know what I'm saying? Even like me listening to R&B shit, listening to jazz shit, it helps me as an MC. I'm I'm finding different cadences and different pockets and instrumentation. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, wow, damn, you could do that. Or 
I'm like, damn, I can find a pocket within what they're doing right here and come with a whole new flow. So all of that shit, I think having music knowledge and, and music theory for sure, you know what I'm saying, um, it helps you all around the board no matter what you're doing in this shit. Yeah. No, and you know, not to even go off a topic or nothing, but I think it's like that in football. A lot of receivers and mm-hmm. people like that will go take ballet. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. To, to so that's help, footwork. Yeah. Just to help their footwork out, you know. You, you got to be open-minded, man. Definitely. When you're going into anything if you want to be the best. You want to be the correct? best, for sure. So I do respect that. You're like, man, I just keep an open mind because I want to be able to be open and be free when I, you know, I actually do music. Absolutely. That shit is dope right there, yeah, man. Yeah, for, for real, sure, for I really sure. do respect that. Yo, yo, upbringing up in New York, man. What was that like other than the music, man? How was it, man? Did you come from a good home, rich home, poor home, mid home, you know? <laughs> Had a little bit, you know, but we still made it through. Now, we definitely was poor. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. what it was, though, bro? Even when, you, even when you don't have much, when you got love, you yeah. feel like you're not missing nothing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't have... All the Jordans, I ain't have all the fly shit. You know, my parents wasn't together. My pops was dealing with what he was dealing with. My mom's was dealing with what she was dealing with. But it was love. I never felt downtrodden. I never felt like we fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm like, damn, we in the hood. It is what it is. But my people into the left and the right of me, they the same way. But it's love, right? You know what I'm saying? And I think love can compensate for certain things that are not there. You know what I'm saying? I don't never remember no going to bed hungry, starving. You know what I'm saying? We ain't never get put out of no shit like that. Like, see, I might not have had the brand new Jordans when they right. released I, that day. I didn't have them that year. Yeah. Or the year after. <laughs> I, that's why I got them on now. You know what I mean? This right, is this is right. like, you know what I mean? This is like psychological type shit. Right, right, um, right. But yeah, so yeah, we you know, I grew up in the hood, man. Single parent household. It was the eighties and nineties was crazy. But my mom's did the best she could and, and we still f-ing this tight to this day. And she's super proud of me and I'm super proud of her because we both figured out a way out the hood. Right. You know what I mean? Now us talking about being broke and having money. I know that, you know, being a rapper is, exper- is is expensive. You know, is that something that you experienced as well? You know, having to go through that. You know, it's crazy, bro. All the rich, rich I know is the cheapest month. They don't, don't spend no bread. I'm learning now. I'm like, damn, because people look at me like, oh, it's all going to take care of it. Or if they need some and if... I'm the type of person, if I can help you, I'm going to help you. You know what I'm saying? But people will reach out if they need something and shit. So I find myself extending my generosity a lot. But the people that really, really got it, my friends that's really, really up, they don't spend no bread, yo. Either they comped or they not buying nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, you know, I'm I'm over the material type shit. Like, first, I, first when you first start getting bread, you want to look like you got money. Um, and you want to buy a bunch of shit. And then after you get the second bins, you're like, this is just cool. You know what I'm saying? After you get the other house, you're like, it's comfortable. You know what I'm saying? No, but you know what you start thinking? Like, I should have saved my money. Money. Yo, it's when just you get up in there and it's not giving you that 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 feel that it you're looking wears for. Off, bro. It wears it off, bro. It always is off. Now, motherfucker got buyer's remorse, <laughs> right? Or I, I, I'm still sensible with with my purchases and shit, but I'm I'm definitely more evolved in that. I understand, like I'm gonna love that shit for a couple weeks, months, whatever, and then it's just gonna be whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? So let's do some shit that always, really I've makes always sense. Said this. I've always said this, right? To Help us try to stack some bread. I feel like I've said this many times, dog, and I and I want to tell you because I'm like, damn, a mother can go. You can make, let's say, make thirty thousand last night, right? Mm. Swear up and down, you about to put up twenty nine thousand of this. You're gonna put a thousand of it in your pocket. You're gonna live off this for the week. You know what I'm saying? You wake up in the morning. You got that early morning splur. You know, like you wake up in the morning, you feeling good. I think I'm gonna go shopping. What's it gonna hurt for me to go pull out a few bands? And go shopping real quick. You know, I always say by the time five o'clock comes around, if you still want it by then, go get it. Mm. Don't just go Don't off just the go. impulse in the morning. You morning. know what I'm saying? Of just feeling good, wanting to go to the mall, wanting to go get some new shoes. Yeah, get some you refresh the shit. shit. You now refresh. you in the Beverly Center spinning bread. Now you in the Beverly Center and you, you down 3,500 before <laughs> right. 12 o'clock. 30, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn. I always say this. If you still want it, still have that same feeling by the end of the day, then go buy it. Word. But nine times out of ten, shit will happen throughout the day you to where that. you'll be 
be happy that you didn't even do that. That's a fact. You be off that shit. Like, That's man, I'm fact. glad I ain't gonna do that stupid I wish ass I would have talked to you when I first got to LA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's it something really, about out here, man. The weather is just nice, as, you yeah. know, especially coming from New York. It's starting to get cold and shit. When I'm out here, I spend more bread. I spend more bread. Well, L.A. is expensive just within itself. Right. You know what I'm saying? So being out here, I feel like you got to pick and choose what you want to do. Like, it's cool to go out a couple days, but you got to go stack up another few, three or four. You for know sure, what I'm saying? Sure. Then go back out another day. They go back day. out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't do it every day. You're going to not only burn yourself out mentally, but burn yourself out financially. That's a fact. So you got to be smart. Find things to do in your house. Man, you want to bring the club to you. Got yourself a nice little bar of bottles, you know what I'm saying, that you could pick out up from time to time, man. How you smoke, you know, invite your lady friend over or something. Make the club at your house. It's cheaper. Not me. I'm sure my wife is home. I'm good. Well, even with wifey, even <laughs> yeah, with wifey, yeah. like, for man, sure, y'all can sure. turn it in. You know what I'm saying? You don't always got to be outside sure. and spending money because, man, bro, it's f***ing crazy around here. Everything in his mama costs. Look at the gas prices. Look yeah. at living. Right. Cost they, of living crazy. What they going to expect you to do around here. It's hard for you to, if you don't make an abundance of money you or have a roommate, Man, you gonna be you just gonna be living. Yeah, that's about it. That's you just fact. gonna be able to pay rent. You that's know what I'm saying? Fact. And maybe grab a couple little things until your next paycheck. Yeah, you got to be rich to be broke out this month. <clears throat> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's why I see though now. That's why I see why people are uh, so frugal mm-hmm. around here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see, the Romanians, Chinese man, they don't be buying shit. Them niggas be rich as f- right. Going right back to the hills. Going you know what I'm back. saying? Because they stacking their bread. Stacking their bread. Us, bro, we got a lot of vices, a lot of it's a lot of temptations that pull us. The jewelry store, the shoe store. Oh, f- it. I'm going to go shop Melrose today. Damn, Facts. I want that real quick. It's not going to hurt. Pass that shit up. That's a fact. But I wanted to really back in that, like, that's what I was trying to ask you, like, just but back to the music. Mm. Have, like, music ex- is expensive. Have you ran into that? Like, you know, having to pay to play. Um... Not really. Not really. I invest in my craft. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I built a studio at the house, shit like that. So yeah. that's an investment in, you know what I'm saying? That yeah. that with a great ROI. But I never like paid no you know, you gotta pay, you gotta publish this, you gotta I'm 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 one of those people that if you working, you deserve to get paid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not trying to nickel and dime nobody. I don't want nobody to try to nickel and dime me. I evolved to that. You know what I'm saying? Before, nigga, I'm trying to get it figured out because ain't none of us got no bread. But if you working, you definitely should be getting paid. Um, for me, but like to pay DJs and, you know, any like payola under the table type shit, nah, my shit bases based off relationships, you know what I'm saying? Or if you got somebody working your record and they taking care of shit for you. Not everybody got that charisma, baby, to walk (laughs) in the room and be able to move somebody and be like, this a likable nigga. Right. I want to fuck with his shit. You right. know what I'm saying? Give me your music. Give me everything that you got, man. I want to put it out for you. You know, not everybody got that charisma walking in the room, but That's doesn't fact. necessarily mean that they don't have good music. That's a fact. You know what I'm That's saying? So I feel you're like, well, Sharp, for me, it wasn't really necessarily money. Yeah, it yeah. was relationships. Relationships. People took a liking to Relationships them. is key. And, 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 and man, being how to barter. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of the things I learned early was... Everybody got people running up on them asking what they can do for them. Yo, can you help me? Yo, I needed it. I, I Don't go with the ass. Yo, go with the offer. Yo, my man, Um, you know, it's crazy. I Googled you. Your website. Yo, I do websites. Check this out. Oh, shit. That's crazy. Y'all could do your Shopify page. Ah, ah, ah. Yo, I design shit. I can make you. Mer- you go to people with an offer, they automatically paying attention. You know what I'm mm. saying? It's like figure out what you can bring to the table as opposed to take away from the table because it keep you around longer. And then you can get to your, yo, you know what? My man did my shit. Yo, what you need, bro? You Oh, you got a, oh, you need a verse? Oh, you got a record? Oh, I got you. No work. You know what I mean? And then that's how you start to build your relationships out. And I think that's the best advice you could give because a lot of people are just coming with the gimme, gimme, gimme. The viewers needed to hear that, yeah, bro. Yeah, the gimme, like, gimme, like, gimme, gimme shit. If you ain't pretty much you saying, if you ain't got no character, find some. Find, find yeah, some within yourself. Some, figure whatever it is out. about you, what's yeah. your thing? You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then figure out how to utilize that shit to the best of your, vi- of your ability. Because everybody's got a gift. Everybody got a gift. It's the way that you tap into it that can make it sellable. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? And That's make yourself approachable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where somebody might see you, it could be a, you know, a high profile celebrity. You be in the club, you shiny, he says security, or she says security. Hey, go tell them I want to talk to them real quick. Mm-hmm. I just want to see what they own. No doubt. Because they, they're just living in just, the mix. Yeah. When I get up around, I feel like this. And for the viewers, I want them to know. 
when you if you're moving like in a rap game, media game, whatever, and you get up around celebrities, you get around somebody of that substance, act normal. Gotta act normal. Don't Gotta. act like you because they deal with that shit all day all anyway day. already. You Facts. know what I'm saying? What I feel like a, a famous person would want is to be treated normal. Yeah. Because that's something that they don't that's get. That's they don't get. So that's why I feel like you say that's where your characteristics come in because you're like, I'm a likable nigga. It's easy for me to get up on them real quick, you know? And they're they going to take a liking yeah, to me. Yeah, we just chilling. We cracking jokes. We having here. fun. Yeah, you know I don't mean? want no autograph. I don't no want picture, none of that no, shit. Yeah. Yo, the, the spots I be in, the shit I be doing, bro, you fuckers would never know. I'm yeah. not, you know what I mean? Like the shit that do make it to my social media, this is after the 17th interaction or, you know, sometimes I'm gonna pull a phone out like, yo, let's get this vid real quick, a celebrity and shit. But for me, yo, I don't lead with that. You can't lead with that shit, bro. Because people be like, they they get that shit 24-7, like you said, they be off that. Right. You've been doing media and shit, haven't you? Yeah. Man, how's that experience been for you, especially Torrey crossing over from, you know, the music side to the media side because it's similarities because, mm -hmm. you know, you're actually talking about what's going on around here. You know what I mean? And what's going on in the music space, but it's still different. It's a whole different ball sure. game because you're not rapping for it now. Now you're talking for it. Right. right. So it's a little bit different. You know, what's that experience been like for you? For me, it's been dope. You know, I didn't really have any media aspirations, if we've been honest. I wanted to rap tour, you know, do all the rap shit and then move into television and film. So the opportunity we talk about your name ring bells before I even met you. Word. I knew Torrey well I said, like, oh shit, that's coming in today. Good, good things. Like it was good, good all okay. nothing but good things. No you doubt. know what I'm saying? Nothing but good things. Um my relationships got me into radio. I was spending so much time going to serious pumping my records, you know what I'm saying? Interacting with the DJs, rapping on their shows, all that shit. Um one day my man DJ Eclipse was like, yo, I need a co-host for my show. This is a man who helped me tremendously throughout my rap career, so I couldn't yeah. be like, no, f*** out of here. So I was like, all right, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I'll try it. And I ended up enjoying radio, and I did his show for a few years, and then I branched off and got my own show. I'm about to hit 10, what's, what we in, November? 10 years. Yes. 10 years having my own radio show this month. Crazy. That's crazy, That's man. crazy. Congratulations. Appreciate a decade. It. Yeah, decade. Decade a of this. Decade, decade of this crazy shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you crazy. know that, that, that springboarded into being able to do television shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can host it on radio or f*** it. We're going to put you on TV. Can you read a teleprompter? Can you be funny? Can you be charismatic? That's how the TV shit happened. And I always wanted to act. So then that just naturally brought me into the acting shit, the movies and the TV shows and all of that. So... Um, just being in the whole public space and, and being a creative and an entertainer, all that shit is encompassing for me. It's like a holistic thing. What's some of the best moments or memories while you were rapping or touring? Man, shit. Um, the, I'll, I'll give you a memory. The very first time I went on the road, I think it was 2006 or seven. Uh, shout out to my man, Master Ace, my big homie Ace, Marco Polo, EMC. And... He brought me out as an opener. We we in Canada, right? And I ain't had no passport. I couldn't even travel and shit. I had to go right before the tour, get a passport, all that shit. And we in Canada. And in my mind, I'm already kind of setting up the scene. Like, yo, you the opener act. Obviously, they're here to see the headliner. Go do your 15 minutes. You know what I mean? And, and just try to win some of the people over. But in my wildest dreams, I didn't think that I already had fans and supporters in the crowd. So when I'm rapping and they start rapping along and they knowing the songs, this is first Canada and then we go over to Europe and my mind is blown because I'm like, damn, the, at first that's the, I learned the power of the internet. I was like, the internet got this music traveling all over the country, all over the globe, all over the world. And the second thing I learned was just that you never know how your shit, some shit you write in the projects in the hood is impacting people millions of miles away, thousands of miles away. Yeah. So that was just the first memory, like going on stage and rapping and seeing motherfuckers that didn't speak the language rap it back to me was crazy. It's got to be crazy going over. Did you have more fun? Because you've done uh, shows and tours here in the States, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Have you had more fun doing them in the States or was it overseas? Way more fun overseas, bro. <laughs> I'm, sp I'm so Everybody spoiled. Everybody say that shit in basketball players be like, bro, I'd rather play overseas, I'm so spoiled bro. overseas, bro, that it take a lot to get me to do a show in the States. Yeah. Just because, you know, this is too cool for school. It's 80 rappers in the crowd. Yeah, it's 44 yeah. managers. Where's the mother? 
motherfuckers that just love and the 2, music. Two thousand critics. Yeah, <laughs> and two thousand critics. You know what I mean? So I just I started my career yeah. really overseas. Like my first touring happened, like I said, first Canada, and then we did Europe. So we did thirty dates in like thirty five days or some shit. So that's a lot of that's a lot of shows. To go from Canada. To Europe. Right. So it wasn't ba- it wasn't back to back. So the first tour was Canada. That was like maybe two weeks. Uh-huh. And then some months later we did the Europe shit. But getting overseas and 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 just man, the hospitality, the love for the hip hop, the love for the culture, the love for dope music. I was like, then I come back to New York and I'm like, yo, throw your hands up. And niggas is like, I'm like, yeah, nah. Let's take me back. Me. Yeah, <laughs> take take me back to Germany, bro. <laughs> He said they throwing their hands up before we even Yo, the stage. Yo, they got they ready. They they there to have a good time. They there to have a good time. They not there for no other agenda. They might want to take a picture. You sign them up, a t-shirt or some vinyl, but they there to enjoy the music, and that's what I love. The people that genuinely enjoy the well, shit. Well, it's hard here when a nigga wants to enjoy your music, but he too worried about if the ops are standing over there around the corner that and part. what they about to do after your show. That part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it. I feel you on that. People genuinely like in other places like that across the world. People genuinely do just to come out to come nah, out for a good sure. time. They keep the riff raff out the door, and they, the they appreciate you coming, right? They know this guy from Brooklyn. They, I don't know where that shit is at, but I know it's far. So they appreciate you being there. So they're going they're going to show up and have a good time and rock with you. Did you uh, already have aspirations to branch out at any point? Like just branch out just by yourself, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, when I was younger. I did solo work. You know, I was in a group, but for me, it was yeah. always, you know, Torre. I'm going to build. I did, before we called it a brand, I was like, I'm going to build up my name. You're going to know Torre the rapper, and you're going to love him so much that you're going to put him in a TV show, and you're going to love that so much that I'm going to end up getting a sitcom, and I'm going to do some movies. Like, that was always my mindset because I was influenced by Pac. I was influenced by mm. Latifah. I was influenced by LL, Chocolate, Kid, and, Kid and Play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Ice-T. I, I, I'm kicking it with Ice-T the other day, and he told me he discovered my music on social media. He was scrolling, and he sur- he's like, oh, the fuck is this? He heard some shit. He's like, oh, this thing is going crazy. Then he said he started, I saw when he started following me, then he was like, he started checking in all the other shit. He's like, oh, you do interviews, you rap, you host. He's like, this nigga's dope. And that shit for me, like I've been a fucking Ice T fan since and I was a he's kid. He's not fucking with everybody. And he's not fucking with. He's not fucking so with for him to like when I saw him follow me, and I ain't one of them niggas to screenshot the follow and post it like weird yeah. shit. But I was just like, I took a beat. Like wow, Ice T. I, I felt like that when I met Warren G and he followed me. Crazy. And I was like, damn, you're crazy. Saying, was Warren G. Nigga. That's I'm Warren like, G. Nigga, that's that G funk shit. Nigga. Yeah, I'm hell like, yeah. Up to this nigga and not this nigga. Yeah. With my work and with what I got going on. Love that shit. It, it, it definitely uh, does put a little bit more pep in your step and how you move and be like, damn, I'm probably on the right track. You're on the right, yeah, you're on the right so path. So that's bro. cold for you and T to actually engage like that. And he you know? fuck with real ones. Like, he fuck with a lot of Brooklyn people. Obviously, he spent a lot yeah, of time in New York shooting and shit. New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of Warren, summertime in the LBC, my shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's my shit. I, yeah. You know, I got to get him in here. I talked to his, uh, I talked to his publicist. When I talked to her, they were just about to get ready to go on tour. So okay. all I got to do is just shine back in. Yeah, with spend the block on that. Spend Make a, that spend the block I, I want to watch that one. Yeah, I want to watch bring that him one. In Hell because yeah. I grew up on G-Funk, you know, and like like you said, he was like, that, that was a dope era. You know what I'm saying? Because that was the 90s. You know Hell what I'm yeah. saying? Like that was that 90s Hell era. Yeah. A G-Funk, you know, shout yeah, out to it Warren was, G. It was, it was like smooth gangster shit. You know what I mean? It yeah. was a lot of harmonies. It was more melodies and shit. Yeah. The beats was ill. Like, yeah, Warren G brought a lot to the game, bro. You talking to you talking to Ice-T give you any like news you can use, like a piece of game that you walked away with? Man, just, just one piece, like when you talk to him. In the setting that we was in, it wasn't really that, but we connected. And so mm-hmm. now we connected. Now we going, you know, take it further and shit. Yeah. But just knowing, like, like you said, when you see people that see you, you know, you on the right path and shit. And like you said, he don't fuck with, he said, he's like, I don't be fucking with a lot of people. Like he, he started he's putting older, liking comments and you know, he put fire emojis and shit. Like he's older. shit he don't got to do. You know what I mean? Like, that shit is like, that shit mean the world to me, bro. No offense, I'm surprised he even know how to work social media. That guy's, <laughs> that guy's not, I'm saying, like, yeah, I love yeah, Ice yeah, T, yeah. not young. Yeah, you know but what I'm he, saying? Yeah, so, he an OG. He an OG, he OG so for real. For him to, like, you know what I'm saying, reach out and extend, like, hey, young homie, I see you. Yeah, you that know shit what I'm was saying? fire. That's got to be fire. That's that got to be fire. a dope moment. No doubt. What was, uh, what was your first opportunity in media? First opportunity, whether you turned it down or you took it. 
Oh yeah, so that was DJ Eclipse, you know. Mm -hmm. So DJ so Eclipse, you, you ran with that was your first move. Yeah, that was the first thing I really was able to do in a in a in a, in a, in a wide, on a wide scale um, because he was on Sirius XM. He had a, a, a mix show. He still got the mix show. Him and DJ Riz, and it was on some late night shit or whatever. But he played my music on it so much, it catered to the audience. It catered to that underground, that underground audience, and so I was just like, shit, this is just me chopping it up with my homie. With some of the rap homies, right? This ain't yeah. going to be too hard. And then I just learned how to cultivate my question asking skills. You know what I'm saying? My follow-ups, um, how to do research. All that, you start to develop and cultivate how to do that shit. But that comes with time. But the first opportunity was DJ Eclipse allowing me to be on his show on Sirius XM, Rap is Out of Control. That's live right there, yeah, bro. Yeah, that shit crazy. I just, I respect it because you never really know where it's going to go. You was, So you was just trying something. That's a fact. It wasn't something you're like, all right, this is going to be the goal. We're going to make this happen. You're just like, oh, y'all want to shoot the shit? Nigga, yeah, we doing that I, yeah, shit we already, do that. Bro. Yeah, we do that. You know what I learned, bro? When you got blinders on, you yeah. miss the opportunities that's on the left and the right. You right, know what I'm saying? So, like, right. have your focus, but don't be so tunnel vision that you don't see it's an opportunity there because you never know what your path is going to be. You got to be open to the shit that's happening in the universe. Yeah. And from there, you can make the best decisions. Do you uh, do you still use your rapper pen when you do interviews? Or you only take it out when you when you make music? Nah, you know, <laughs> it's this shit is... Come on, bro. <laughs> this shit is all, like, it's all encompassing for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, yeah, so... All of the rap shit seeps out. Like I've had on the show and we we rhyme. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. and they be like, oh, the interview nigga is nice. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. shit like that. Or yeah. or I've had times where I work with an artist I like and I had the them on the show. Nigga. The interview yeah, nigga, nigga nice. interview nigga is nice. You know what I mean? Um, or I work with an artist. You know yeah. whether we did songs together or I did some writing for them or whatever. Or we did shows together. So that brings a different level of conversation to the conversation. You know, a different level. We relate more. Like oh this was on the road like he know what this shit is like he know i don't even feel like being here but i showed up off of the mutual respect shit like that right. so but for me it's all like all encompassing so like the rap shit seep out the 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 media shit seep out it's all you know it's all Tory shit what was one of your favorite interviews you got a chance to would just sit down with somebody and do one of your favorite where you was like even if it didn't do good you was like in my opinion i like this one i felt like we touched all the bases Man, um, I had some, you know, I'm 10 years in, like I said, yeah. I had some really dope conversations. Well, just um, one that sticks out. That's why I feel like it's, I can sit here and say the last, what was your top yeah, 10? Yeah, 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 but yeah. But there's yeah. always one, you know what I'm saying, that really does I'm going to tell you me. one that means a lot to me mm -hmm. for, for numerous reasons, but for the obvious, Nipsey Hussle. When I, I sat go. with Nip, because... By the time Nip ended up on my show was the Victory Lab album and, you know, he promoting that shit, he running around. But we had so many encounters before that, seeing him at South by Southwest doing shows here and there and there. And it's always been love. So when we finally got a chance to sit down and have a full conversation, we had already been in each other's space numerous times and shit. And so, you know, Nip always going to drop super jewels in there. Right. So we did it. At Sirius XM, we got a studio audience in there. We got the DJ live. It's myself and my man, Gray Rizzy, coming with the questions. And it was just like that shit that in the moment, I f it felt special. You know what I'm saying? Like it felt special while it was happening. And then people taking, yo, they use that shit on BT when he passed. They use a clip from it. They use clips from that shit when people graduate. People always tag me, yo, they playing your shit in the, in the, in the arena right at our graduation. So like it was just the level of conversation that we was able to have and that it was evergreen content that lives on and on and on. Obviously with Nip not being here, we we hold on to those moments even tighter. Yeah. But even if he was still here, it would have that same it would have those same legs because it was just a poignant conversation. So you say it was going to be a timeless interview regardless. Regardless, regardless. Right. You know, and it's it, you know, it's a blessing that we had that time together and it sucks that he's not here, but again, man, we we leave the physical, but whatever you leave, whatever your legacy is that you leave here on earth, do good work cuz that's what people have once you're not here no more. You I, I want to jump over to another movie Not no with jumper. You. I wanna, yeah, I definitely, <laughs> man. For real. That's what we had. And that's the only way we're going to get in the action. You dig? I want to know. Now, you going over the series didn't have nothing to do with DJ Eclipse, did it? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where it was at. That, yeah. I'm saying, did he? I thought maybe you had did something with him prior to nah, going to. Nah, it was it was he he he. That was the platform he had. He offered me so an opportunity the to be there. Call. He was like, "Yo, Torrey, serious, come come with it." You know what I'm saying? And then so I got a shot at a couple names after DJ Eclipse gave me that opportunity. Years down the line, I talked to the program director, Reggie Reggie Hawkins. Mm. Reggie Hawkins was the man I had to talk to to get the show. Reggie was like, let's do it. I got to shout out Ron Mills. Ron Mills is the program director now. He was working there then. He was a very big Torrey advocate. Yeah. Give him a show. I think I you can do wanna, it. I didn't want to ask the same question. I didn't want to make it seem like I did. I just wanted to know, yeah, was yeah, DJ yeah. Eclipse like beforehand, was that before you actually went over to Sirius or right. was he the phone call nah, that he was, was actually made to you to, hey, he bring your ass on up over here to Sirius. <laughs> we got facts. a job for you. Big facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was DJ Close for sure. And where then one, one last you? name out of the three, I just got to say, um, and my man Dion Summers, you know what I'm saying? Like those, those three people who gave me my opportunity in radio. Where were you at in that point in life? Like when you, when you got that call from DJ Clips, like where were you at? Like were you in a good place, bad place? Bad mental headspace. I was, was in the. I was. I was so f-ing apprehensive because Dang. I was a rapper, right? I was a rapper. It was like oh nine, I think, when he offered when me and Marco dropped oh nine. So yeah, it was like late oh nine when he offered me the the opportunity, mm-hmm. and I'm like, how people gonna look at me? First of all, because this is a little before. Every rapper had a podcast and every rapper was doing media and shit like that. It was a little more frowned upon then. And I'm like, how are people going to look at me? I'm still trying to establish myself as a rapper. But the layout of the land was much bigger. Like, I've noticed, like, it, it went from, you know, being able to have acres in this shit to everybody kind of living on top of each other now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The mm-hmm. media space has gotten so overwatered. It's so watered down, oversaturated. I was able man. to, I was, and I was able to plant my seeds early. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so that was, that's, that's a blessing in it. But, um, yeah, so... You know, back in 09 and shit, when he offered me the opportunity to do radio, I was like, I don't know, because I don't want my peers to not respect this rap shit. And I don't want people to discover me like as this, a radio and host. your ass can't go back to rap. And go back. Because what yeah, you don't know at yeah. that time, nobody knew if you crossed over to this, right. could, would my fans still love can me still, in the, in can the you rap go space? Back? Right, you know exactly. what I'm saying? That's, that's scary, especially yeah. for some that you've tried. This is what you've been building my whole your life. entire life. That's what I've been doing my whole life. Exactly. So, so yeah, I would have yeah, been scared. Like, not even scared, but fuck it, nigga, scared. Yeah. I would have been very timid. You know, I learned a word then, trepidation. You know what I'm saying? Trepidation. There was trepidation. Trepidation there, you know what I mean? Um, but but like I said, man, you never know where the opportunity, where the blessing gonna come from. So and I couldn't tell my brother no, you know what I'm saying? Like DJ Eclipse is the guy who put my record in Fat Beats on consignment. F- it, we gonna put up there and see if people f- with it. He played me on the halftime show. He let me come up there and spit ball. Like he gave me so much early on in my career that by the time you know them three two three years passed and we had built a bond, and he was like, yo. I want you to come co-host with me. I couldn't say no. I had to. I had to try it. You know what Torrey, I mean? I'm, I'm, like I'm excited to ask you because you're actually from that air. Like, man, what happened to that TRL air? Like, where a mother could come on, everybody know real shit. Everybody could come on, look at your shit. You know what I'm saying? Talk about your shit and go across the street and buy it. Great time. Remember that? Like, Hell yeah. The, Go to man, the Virgin Eminem, Mega Store. I remember when Eminem and Busta Rhymes stood there for the closing show. They said, damn, where are we going to sell our music at now? Because streaming wasn't pop. Like, right. That wasn't where it was at at that time. Where they, what niggas did was go on these shows to to, and shop their shit. And you had to go to store and buy it. What happened to that, man? Where they look across the street and everybody's over there. You see long ass lines. Super everybody's line. standing in line to buy your shit. This is how... This is why I give so much. Yeah, that was Virgin Megastore. This is why I give so much reverence to those artists because when you sold a million records, five million records, two, Mm -hmm. even gold, motherfuckers went out and spent that bread. This wasn't no super convenient sit home, press play on your phone, press play on your computer. You had to get up, get dressed, go somewhere, go into the store, find the product, go to the register, purchase it, le- like... Open it up. Mother- it's plastic. Yeah, you had to open it up. You read the line of notes. <laughs> but the point is, people were invested enough to do all of that shit. It was and a good so time, yeah, It was it? a great time. <laughs> yo, it was a, I'm, not the, I'm not the one to shy away from technology. All of the shit of is going to grow on and move on, and we all going to have to adapt. You know what I'm saying? That just is what it is. But I do respect... The artists in that era who was able to 
maintained in that era still exist today or just they just presented Lauren. We keep going back to this Lauren Hill shit, but no, cool. the motherfucking 10 million soul plaque, bro. This is when you had to go, 10 million people had to go get it. You know what I mean? Like, that's some different shit. It's, it, I think what was dope about places like TRL and things like that back then because the artist got to actually interact with the fan. Yeah, and you got a chance to learn, right? To you said learn, learn who, who you... This is when there was a level of mystique with certain mm. artists. The only time you really could tap in with them is when they did these moments. They did the TRLs or the 106 in Park. So oh, yeah. they sat down with... You know, they sat down with Sway or they sat down with Big Boy. We get a glimpse into their life. We want to know so much. AJ and Free, right? A that yeah, was 106 yeah, 106 Park, Park right? AJ and yeah. Free shit. Yeah, yeah. you know, I got, I got shot on my East Coast and my West Coast shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, you know, so much shit that, you know, so much shit that the Baker Boys would play or if they, somebody came into the show, you learned about more about your favorite artists and you felt more connected in those times. Like now it's so much, it's almost overkill. That's why it was dope to hear your perspective because you actually come from that era Word. to where you saw it actually working and then you actually got to come over and cross over to the streaming and yeah. other things like that. But I saw it in Eminem's face. I saw it in Buster Rhymes' face. Them niggas was standing there that day when they was closing out in TR like, where are we gonna shop our shit at now? Yeah. All these type of platforms are closing. The internet wasn't as big on streaming then when That's that shit was going on. The internet's what shut a lot of that shit for down. Sure. There was no more need for it. Right. And, and, no and you got to go back to before with streaming and, you know, it was illegal downloads. My was on LimeWire. They was on Napster. Yeah. So you standing there looking at... All the at, shit that corrupts your computer. <laughs> all the shit that give you a, <laughs> give you a virus. You know what I mean? And maybe, uh, X, and maybe X videos too. X videos too. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw a little bit yeah, of nasty shit little, in little, there. Just, just a little sprinkle. The internet definitely did change the game. How did you For adapt? Sure. Like I said, bro, you gotta... You can't shy away from the tech. You can't like try to fucking hold up a, 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 a fucking door against the damn. This shit is flowing, bro. Right. You, it's going it's going to happen whether you like it or not. So you got to figure out how to adapt to it. You got to yeah. figure out how to utilize it and take all this technology and make it work for you. Yeah. You know, and the industry was able to figure out kind of how to be reborn. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. once the download and then the Napster shit happened and you got to give credit to the MP3, the the creator of the MP3, but also the creator of, you know, the iPod and those first they like fuck it. Let's make the device where people going to steal the music at this point. Let's make the device because we can make money off of that. And then we can license these records from the labels or we can get these records from the labels and they can make a little bit of money. So making a little bit of money is better than is just lime wiring your shit and you making no money. And although the rates are shitty, at least it was able to revive the industry to where people can start to, you know, flourish and thrive again. You used to have some cold ass CD booklets, huh? Oh. All the CDs, huh, nigga? He used to have like three books in your car. You just remind me of a nigga Yo, like that. Like, hey, I bet you Torrey got that shit. Let's I go had all house. that shit, bro. I bet you, nigga, we go through his books. He got the cover in there in, got had a in front and, of the CD. And don't put my shit, <laughs> don't fold my shit up. Don't rabbit ears my shit, bro. I don't play that. Straighten my shit out for, for I fuck you up. <laughs> Hey, back then, think about it, though. To steal a nigga's CD book, right? You talk about a good two grand worth of music Dog. and some of them shit, Yeah, certain shit, especially like, you, you know. Double disc or something. And you, or, or the mixtapes, right? Like certain mixtapes that was on CD, like the, when they when they started to move into the CD space, you got the DJ yeah. Clues and the Ron G's and the yeah. rest of the DJ K Slays. Some of that shit you wasn't finding again. So if somebody got you, they got you good. You know what I mean? <laughs> if somebody got, shop, I'm going to tell you this. I still got all my CDs, bro. I yeah, still got right. all my, or the, everything I love and all my tapes. I got all. I got a big ass bin of tapes, and I still got all my CDs. It's crazy that it's nostalgic now, right? Yeah, it's crazy that that's you know what I'm saying got aesthetics to it to where like people be like CDs. Yeah, who kids don't know what CDs are, man? What the fuck is that? My kids don't know what CDs are. Yeah, you know what I mean, think about how expensive though. Like them books used to be back in the day. If you had like all the top shit, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You could have a like I said, twenty five hundred dollar CD booklet. You know what I'm that's saying? A where fact. you open it up. Nigga got everything. You done yanked a couple niggas shit out they books. I have, especially. 
Nigga. Yo, oh, I went we to a, high, I'm going Oh, I go to a shorty like, house? If I go to a shorty oh, house? Yeah, because she That's got all of my r and <laughs> I'm saying she got all the R&B I shit. I used to build my cousin for oh, all that yeah. shit. Tony I Braxton. I, I built her for that uh, that Nostradamus uh, Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. When Nas dropped that Nostradamus or dropped that I Am, I think, it, man, I'm peeling all that shit. Nah. Was cracking back that was, that was That was one of my go-to signature moves. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> I oh met a chick. I went to the crib. Out your book. I'm going to look. First, I want to see where your mind is at. So I want to see what kind of actual books you mm. got on your shelf. Yeah. And then I'm going to your music collection. I want to know where your mind is at. I want to know where your where your musicality is at. Mm. And if I saw some shit I like, you know what I mean? Maybe it left with me. <laughs> Maybe. You, know what I mean? you probably still got some of that shit in the books today. All that <laughs> shit I told you I still got. One of them shit say Sheila or some shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, one of them shits. Definitely, bro. You can, back then, you could still... Anything got in the car. You got them for their music, they be hot. Oh, for sure. That's a, that's a big fact. That's a <laughs> big hot. fact. If I loan some, y'all, I still to this day, yo, I loan my cousin my common tape. You know what I mean? And he somehow accidentally taped over my tape, bro. My common album, bro. To this day, in 2023, that shit still hurt my heart. <laughs> like, yo, bro, how, how did you allow this to happen? Shout out to my cousin Ski. I love you. No, I remember on the boom boxes, you press the record button and the play button. Yes. Man, record over That's some it. shit. Yeah, nigga accidentally record over my common shit. He replaced it, but still, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the principalities of this shit. It's the, it is yeah, the, it's the principalities of this shit. I remember, man, I was probably like five years old. One of my favorite songs was... Like R and B joints was from H down, rocking the boots. Oh, knocking, knocking the boots. boots. Yeah, yeah, I was my man. Yeah. Play that joint, man. Back to back. That to was the back. shit. Yeah, yeah, that, that was the that shit. That was my shit. Man. That was the shit. You was too young to know about that shit. I was just, I knew the words though. You just I don't knew, know what you it just, meant. Right, but you just know it made it felt right. I just knew it felt right. The melody was <laughs> right, on right. point. We didn't have point. child songs back then. Child's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this it was a little different. Like, yeah. where you could listen to it on TV and it's right, just right, for right. the kids. Kids bop shit. We ain't had we, that. We had that. Now we had to listen to Knocking the Boots. You had to listen to Knocking the Boots. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and make up whatever in your mind you Whatever that shit that meant. Was, right, whatever right. that meant What did that mean to you at five? I, I don't even know. Not nothing sexual. Yeah, though. you probably was really like, wow, why would they do this with their shoes? Yeah. <laughs> 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 what does this mean? <laughs> it's just it's shit jamming though. You know what I mean? Shit jamming, shaw. Hey, I gotta ask you, man. What's uh, what's your favorite thing about being in series? Um, just me and people, me and the talent. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I was in a building last week, just on the humble, and Tim's was in the building, and Mary J. Blige was in the building, yeah. and um. You know, you just never know who's going to be there. Technically, I know because I see the list, but yeah. you never know on any <laughs> given f-ing day yeah. who's going to be there, who you're going to interact with. I've built a lot of relationships just having interviews with people. You know what I'm saying? Like I interview and we just have, you know, we click and shit, right? Yo, take my number after the show. We take number next time they in town. Yo, Torrey, I'm in town. Um, I'm going to come through the radio, but also we doing this, right? Like, for example, shout to, shout to the homie Sunny Digital. He came, he did the show last week. Dope dude. Came, he did my show last week. And he was like, yo, um, I'm going to the studio tonight. You want to pull up? I was like, bet. I go to the studio. We kick it some more. He played me the album early. We talking about wild shit. Now we texting back and forth. Now we just on some cool shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so relationships get built. So I think to some of the dopest shit about Sirius outside of people being able to discover me is just like, you know, being having having the opportunity to meet people that you might not have crossed paths with or to build relationships with people that you get a chance to just, you know, have a business relationship with and, and let it grow. Speaking of business, what's your relationship like with Sirius overall with them? You obviously got a good relationship with, you know, was, some of the artists and people that come through the building. I will tell you what my relationship is after this next contract negotiation. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> which is which is upon us right now. Yeah. yeah. He says, that's a good question. That's a Sharp. great Just question. Maybe a little too hey, premature yeah, for me. So yeah. what I got going we're gonna on. We're going to take this clip right here. We're going to make this part go viral. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part right here. I just want to know, you know, I mean, it seems like it's had to have been so. I mean, somewhat great because you have stuck around. For sure. I haven't heard any type of problems coming Yeah, yeah, nah, for with, sure. You know, Torre and Sirius breaking up at any type of, you know what I'm saying, any time or nothing like that. So I just wanted to know where the relationship stands because I know being around that long, around each other, that's a relationship. For sure. What happens in relationships, they get rocky yeah, sometimes. Shit, yeah, for sure, for sure. Nah, you like know? I said, they ain't kick me out and I ain't, and I ain't storm out. So yeah. obviously it's mutually beneficial, it's working. I enjoy... I don't do nothing I don't like, first of all. Mm. I enjoy the people that I'm around in the building. Yo, 
Whatever I do, whatever you see me doing, and people be like, damn, you do so much. It's because I love it all, bro. I don't do, I don't get up and drag my feet to do nothing. You know what I mean? I got here 20 minutes early, right? Because yeah. I wanted to have this conversation. I don't do nothing. I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's a blessing to be in a position where, now granted, some days you might be a little under the weather, a little tired. That's different shit. But yeah, yeah. there's nothing I get up and do on a regular basis that I don't absolutely love. And so my, my time at Sirius and what I'm able to do there and how I'm able to utilize my platform is great for me. And it's obviously beneficial for Sirius XM to have the currency that I bring, you know what I'm saying, from the culture. So, yeah, man, now we got to do is just figure out the zeros. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I thought it was just a great question. I'm like, you know, because I, I work, I work, great in, question I work in media, you know, and it's all, and I believe, you know, especially partnering with somebody or being, you know, under an umbrella, you know, it's very important to, you know, keep the relationship strong. You Not know for what sure. I'm saying? For in sure. the business aspect of things and make sure nothing ever gets rocky in that. And like I, those people that I shouted out earlier, man, shout to to Dion and Ron Mills and the whole yeah. team over there. You know, great, great guys, great guys, for sure, for sure. You're in traditional media per se. What do you think of like all this, like the new media that's going on today? Because you're one of the first to like kind of crossed over, like and and actually came over from being from rapping I'm from the artist side. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, so yeah, that's sure. a hell of an an insight to me, you know, what do you think of this new media today? Because that's what everybody, that's what I feel like they're starting to call it Flacco and all them. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's new talent that's coming up and they got a whole different outlook to what music sure. is, who's hot, who's not, who's shot, you yeah. know, like it, it, <laughs> they do, fact. they got a whole different outlook. Like these, these kids, you know, they'll say F Tupac. They don't. Tupac is no, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I know yeah, that's yeah. got to bother a person like you right, because right, you right. really come from that era and really stand uh -huh. on that. Yeah. What do you think, man, about this today? New media. <sighs> What's new media mean to Torrey? So it's a two-part answer. Okay. I love that anybody that want to get out there and express themselves mm -hmm. have an opportunity to do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially if you can monetize it and make some money and get out of some of these traps that they put us in. You know what I mean? Like, Because all of this shit is designed to keep a certain class of people. It's water. Thank you. Yeah, it is the shit is designed to keep a certain class of people mm -hmm. in a certain tax bracket forever. So if you can figure your way out of that shit, I gotta commend it. I gotta salute it. With that said, there's not a lot of for some, it's not a lot of respect for the traditional journalistic integrity. Just don't do research. Oh shit, such and such shot. You know what I'm saying? You don't even know if it's real or not. Or you see a motherfucker laying there bleeding. You see a motherfucker laying there bleeding, and the first thing you do is take a video. Like, that shit for me is a little crazy. That's a little nuts. That's but, lany, bro. <laughs> but that's that, that's the that's the that's the new shit. That's what the kids is on. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. Um, but it's some good shit out there. It's a lot of dope shit. Like shout to Gina Views. Um, shout to Gina Views. Man, yeah, shout to sure. Gina. It's a lot of um, shout to Nala Simone and, and Speedy and uh, everything they got going over there on the Amazon side. So it's a lot of dope. You know, um, shout to Yachty and what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Like another. I feel like he got the cheat code though, bro. He's a big artist. Come on, right? right? <laughs> well, he I'm got say the this. cheat code. He I got, got I, and shout out to Lil Yachty. But that nigga got the cheat code. And like he said, he was like, man, I was one of the first people, man. You know what I'm saying? Other than Post Malone that ever did Twitch. He already had the cheat code a long time ago. But he still bro. had to build it, though. He still had to build it. You know what I'm saying? Take some water, <laughs> He's like, drink some fucking water. Drink some, water, some water, bro. Take a water break. <laughs> take take, take a water break. Because we're drunk. If we think <laughs> that fucking Lil Yachty, like, come on, man. He's got the cheat code already. I'm going to say, I never, li I see the clips. I never sat there and listened to That's not my... Thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I'm the audience that he's speaking to or speaking for. But what I'm saying Drake is Drake starting a podcast tomorrow. Do we, we think right, it's not right, going to go up? Right, right, right. Of course. And he got oh, they got a nigga can sit there for an hour and a half and scratch his balls. <laughs> Guess what? It's going to see two, three million views. Three million views. At least. So I feel like there's some guys that really have the cheat code and didn't have to really work up at it like how you that's did. That's fair. Because you came in at a time that's, that's that, like very you fair. said, it was, it was kind of frightening right. to, you know, leave that side of it behind, like leave my hip-hop career behind to come over to this, to media. Like, it, it wasn't really heard of like that. Yeah. It was very new. Yeah, it's definitely, he. so I, what I will agree with you on is that it's a much easier, a much easier transition for him. Obviously, he already got millions of people that follow him, so that's already built in ears and eyeballs, so I'll give you that. But the point was, 
that he's a young artist with a voice, with a platform, and he's figuring out another way to express himself. Is it for me? Maybe not all of this shit is for me. Or is he just following the wave? You everybody's think, you think, jumping in. You think, you think you're following the Torrey, way? Everybody's jumping in. We just talked about this. Everybody wants to be on the ship now. I remember, man, listen, when I started doing Sharp Tank, right, there was only a few videos, like only my shit would pop up. So mm. people would rush to it to see it. Now it's so oversaturated because people are making content about me, tagging me in it, hopping in my algorithm. You got to go through. Yo, style his algorithm, bro. It's 70. You got to go through 70. No, I'm not even going to call it bullshit, but you got to go through 70 other ring of a fucking rows before you actually get to the content that That I drop. That you drop. You know what I'm saying? So it gets, it's oversaturated. They're going to drop a reaction video to this right here. Most definitely in talking about this. Reddit will probably be one of the first people to pick the shit up. Then then Lil Yachty going to talk about it because he going to see it. Well, Lil Yachty, like I said, I feel like you got the cheat code. This ain't Mortal Kombat, my nigga. We know you had the fatalities already. <laughs> we don't finish him. Come on, it's it's not. That's not a fair fight. That's not a fair fight. I understand. He's already I, on. I understand your point of view. Musically, he has a fucking fan base out of this world. They fuck with him. You know well, what people I'm saying? People could say I was cheating because I came from the music space, right? They like, oh, people already fuck with you. But it was new to hop over. Nobody knew what was going to happen. You right. had to gamble and take that chance Definitely at that had point. To, now had to. we kind of know what can happen. You know For what I'm sure. saying? Because it's already been battle tested. Some of these motherfuckers flop because they're not consistent. And they and, and this will be the test of time, really, even not that we're going to fucking make this a Yachty show. But we'll see if Yachty continues to put out content and be consistent because sometimes artists, they jump into the shit because like you said, it's easy and it's right there. It's a layup. Yeah. And then they, three months later, it's over. You never hear from them again. What do you think about the situation up in the breakfast club? You think it's over for him? Yeah, that's done. You think it's over with up there? That's I done. I had to ask you, Torre. That's I mean, done. They had a super run. What you, they super, had a super run. Crazy. It was done. Crazy. It was done ever since Angela left the show because yeah. that is not the Breakfast Club anymore. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. people always going to have their favorites on the show, especially when you got multiple casts. So some people gravitated towards Angela. Some people gravitated towards Envy. Some people Charlemagne. Yeah. You know, for all of the shit that Angela would get from people that didn't fuck with her, mm -hmm. when she left the show, you felt a void. You felt like there was something missing. Can those two guys carry the show and do their own thing? Absolutely. But you felt her voice, her presence, her presence yeah, gone. was not there. And that's yeah. why you got other people doing feelings and shit like that. But now with the whole Envy shit, we don't really know how that's going to shake out. I think that's over. Now, uh, shout out to Angela E. too. I met her one time. Uh, I was going to go do a Don't Call Me White Girls podcast. Okay. You know, she work uh, yeah. Break Beat. Shout yeah, out to yeah, Break yeah, Beat. Yeah, for sure. Went to go do her shit. Angela Yee was just finishing up. I got a chance to meet her, so it was cool, man. She got a nice presence, nice lady. And that's the homie. She from Brooklyn. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, nice that's gang. I knew her. I knew her from serious, her serious days. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's the homie. So you say it's definitely over. And do you do you feel like the shit that's going on with DJ Envy right now, whether he's guilty or not, that shit doesn't matter. Whether he knew if you know Caesar Pena was, you know, he he knew this was actually going on and actually had any kind of involvement in it. Do you feel like him just even being a part of that could have possibly ruined what's going on at Breakfast Club? Because I seen oh, Charlemagne sure. tell him to shut the fuck up, pretty much. Right, because he, you, 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 when you got an open case, you know you're yeah. not supposed to talk. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, so that's just rule and, number and one. He shit. wanted to anyway. He says, no, no, no. I feel like I want to address this. I'm Anything like, you envy. say can be used in a court of law. Whether you think you're saying that, he should know his pops is a cop. You know what I'm saying? Like, he should know that shit, but. It's tainted. It's tainted. There's yeah. there's 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 some stink on it now. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't know how the parent company is gonna react to that shit. Nobody want their offices, their buildings ran up in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's that just making it high. This is corporate America. You got motherfucking shareholders and shit that you gotta you gotta account to yeah. and they don't wanna be in no nigga shit. They came in so, there and grabbed them drives. Yeah. The fans grabbed them, yeah, came yeah, and grabbed yeah. them hard drives and when things. Them, but I always look at it like this, right? You got to remember this, too, and especially you know you ain't do nothing. Police, feds, especially when they come in, they come and start taking shit. They're going to make sure they walk it by you in bags, make oh, it look yeah, like they got they all admit. this. Some of it's a scare tactic. Of course. Like, so just chill. It's a show. I don't know if that made him nervous and made him feel like, oh, I got to go say something. But he, I'm sure your lawyer even told you it's not in your best interest yeah. to talk about it. What do you see for the future for them? Where do you think they going to head to, man? 
after this? Like, what's the Charlamagne has already he's already been doing his solo endeavors, so he's gonna yeah. continue to do that. You know, yeah. he's gonna end up with a night show or another day show or something like that. Yeah, Envy been. Envy's going to be fine, you know, as long as he's not found guilty and don't got to do no time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, obviously, if he got to do time, then that's a different conversation. But he'll be fine because he a hustler. You know what I'm saying? He came from the street. He came from mixed tapes to mix CDs to DJ and club. Envy the motherfucker to do three, four clubs in a night. You know what I'm saying? And he was able to turn that into a radio career. So I think they'll both land on their feet. So do you feel like if Envy goes to jail, it's over with for him right now. Like right now, this ain't the time to leave the space because like we were talking about, the space is oversaturated right now. Mm. New content, new characters are coming daily. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So do you feel like if he had to go serve you in a few years, he'd get out? His, his, you know what I'm saying? His candle done blew out by then? I don't even want to talk about post jail because I don't wish jail on nobody. I don't wish jail on nobody yeah, either. But I'm just saying, if he if he was, we're just hypothetically looking at it. I don't want him to go to jail. I don't wish jail on nobody. But if he was to go to jail, do you feel like him even going for a year, two years, his career would be over? Like I, you can't leave it behind right now. Right I, now is not the time. If he had to do anything for two years and move away from this space, I think that. He's built up enough of a following and enough of an audience mm-hmm. that people will be interested when he came back. Yeah. What he was able to do with that is up to him. But I think there would be an interest. Like when Bobby and them went and sat for all that time, Bobby and Rowdy and them, right? Mm-hmm. People was like, damn, we ain't get a lot of music from them. But they stood tall and people respected that. And when they came out, people went back. It's a lot of art. Imagine the artists go away for five, six years and then cut. Nobody checking for you. But because of what their story was... And because of how how tall he stood, even though they were gone from the music space from all that time, people were still engaged because they wanted to see what they was going to come with. And they was able to figure that shit out. Well, they put it out to where, like, Bobby was supposed to never get out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I think that's what kind of gave him his uproar when he actually got released. For sure. Because they said, what's about to happen? They didn't let, quote unquote, they didn't let an animal out the cage. You know what I'm saying? They didn't let a real demon out the motherfucking lair. You I know love, what I'm I saying? Love that, I love that young guy, man. I, I, I love him. I, I love his presence. I love how he just, he really is a good guy, bro. I think he just people like to, I always say don't poke sleeping bears. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because niggas will wake up and get I'm going to really tell tripping. you this, bro. I said this shit earlier in the conversation. Yeah. We being fucking set up and targeted. You growing up, he's a product of his environment. That's it. He's a product of his environment. He grew up in a different place with different opportunities and different resources. He's a different person. Yeah. He's a product of all of that shit. So when you're looking at America's nightmare, you got to blame America for making that shit. Right. You know what I mean? Would, uh, recently, you had just recently dropped some new music with longtime friend and producer Marco Polo, man. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Midnight Run. Uh, it's been 14 years since me and Marco dropped the project together. That's so, live, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact that, first of all, our chemistry is still great because that's my brother. But the fact that so many people care and ask, you know, that's one of the mm-hmm. beautiful things about social media is that your yeah. fans can talk directly to you. Every day, if it's not seven days out the week, it's two days out the week. Or it's three days out. Yo, what's up with this? Or they'll play a song. Damn, this is my shit. I hope y'all drop some new music. 14 years later, they still have demand and the sell records, physical records. You know, we did classic shit. We did vinyl. We did CDs and cassettes in addition to the digital. And every week, I use my 10, you know, your 10 Instagram carousel mm-hmm. to highlight 10 motherfuckers who bought that physical product. Because that's, again, they... They spent their bread to own something tangible. It ain't just press the shit on your phone and listen. It's like, yo, I got to put my information in. I got to wait for this shit to show up. Now I got to take a picture and post it. That's care. That's love. That's a real audience. So I want to make sure I get them that love right back. So I believe I believe Sway interviewed you guys about it earlier in the year. Shout and to it Big actually Bro. Got, it actually got featured on Hip Hop DX, right? Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Big it's Bro crazy. Sway. That's my brother, man. Love him. Shout out to that whole Sway in the morning. That's crazy right there. You and... uh. You and Marco gonna do any more shit in the future? Y'all planning? Yeah. To do anything yeah. else? Yeah, I, I text that motherfucker every day. Send the beats. You know what I mean? Yeah. Send the beats. So we, um, you know, if it makes sense, we'll tour. We definitely gonna make some more music, though. I said no more music droughts for me. 2023, you got a project. 2024, you getting a project. Maybe two. 2025, no more music droughts because it don't make no sense. Now, 
I'm solidified on my radio shit. My well, ain't nobody acting now because of the strike. But you know the acting shit. I'm moving in that. I got an agent. Shout out to you know um, Smith Young Talent. So for me, only thing left to do is. Is, is go to the studio and cook up. You know what I'm saying? Because the other shit is already, you know what I mean? That shit is already rolling. So now it's like get back and get at people what they want. Speaking of tracks and things like that, y'all gave a bonus track as well, I believe, called Go Brooklyn yeah. on that midnight run. Right. The Go Brooklyn shit, so I just posted about, about it. Um, that was a song we did a couple years ago for the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. Yeah, we was we we got approached to do Marco got approached to do some music for the Nets and then they was looking for a theme song. And mm. so he reached out and like your talk, can you do the theme song? And honestly, the funny shit is I'm a Knicks fan. So I'm really sitting there like contemplating like like I should just throw dirt on this shit. Should and I they, do and, this shit? And, and I should do it in a way where they still put it out. Don't even know. I'm <laughs> don't even. In true Brooklyn fashion, though, I was like, "Nah, we gonna do it. We gonna take that brand." So you a New York Knickerbock? I'm a nigga nigga. You know what I mean? I'm a nigga nigga. <laughs> yeah. I, but I took some of the bread yeah. and I went. And spent it at the garden. I went to see the Knicks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you got, I'm super Brooklyn. Everything about me is 100,000% Brooklyn except my basketball team because when I was a kid, it was no Brooklyn Nets. Right. So I'm not going to grow up and be 20 something and switch sides because mm -mm. who the fuck does that? Yeah, right. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. That's the reason I'm not a Nets. If I was, if there was a Brooklyn Nets team when I was coming up, I would be a Brooklyn Nets fan. But the only team in New York was the Knicks. So that's my squad. So the song, even though, even though you, know what I'm saying? you and fucking Stephen A. Man, y'all stand behind. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, me tell, let me let me let me say this. Let me yeah, say this is an egregious. <laughs> <laughs> y'all stand by them motherfuckers, then a hey, through and through, homie. And y'all be having more problems than a little bit. A whole lot of problems. You know what I'm saying, hey, uh -huh. I ain't gonna lie though. I like uh, I like Julius Randle and them. I like them dudes up there, man. You know what I'm saying? They know how to ball. I just don't know what's. I don't know what y'all missing, but y'all missing something. Missing a whole lot, y'all. Y'all missing it. <laughs> Who your squad? You a, you a Clipper or you a Laker? Honestly, man, to be real with you, I was always a Mavs fan. A word. Okay. I'm talking about like Steve Nash, Dirk Nowitzki days when they was playing. Together. Crazy. You know what crazy, I'm saying? So crazy. I always fucked with them. Watch us, watch us win our first championship. All that. Dirk was the only right. one to, to, to pull it through. Jason Kidd. I feel mean? like this, like with Dirk. Dirk was the one that opened up the game to show that big men can shoot, too. That's a fact. Big men can move like the smaller dudes. Right. You know what I'm Kevin saying? Kevin Durant, too. I Kevin mean, Durant. And, and, and Kevin Garnett. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Guys are, yeah. These guys are big shooting. That was unheard of. For sure. You know what I'm saying? For Even sure. back in the day, nobody really shot three-pointers. Everybody either took it to the rack yeah, or it was little long the paint. Twos. Yeah, you play in the paint. You're doing your hook shot. You know what, you know what I'm saying? saying? Like but you playing close to the rim. Later. Yeah, you close to the rim. The big men always stay close to the rim in the painted area. So... Um, yeah, shout out to Dallas, man. Thank but you. the you. song, um, Go Brooklyn. So when we, me and Marco was doing the album, he was like, yo, we never really officially put that song out. I'm like, yeah, but we did that shit for the Nets. Like, why would we put it out? He like, yo, it's still a dope joint. It's really a Brooklyn joint. But in my mind, I'm like, yeah, but I got mad basketball references and they, it was certain words they wanted me to say and shit and all of that. So in my mind, I was like, I don't think it's a good song song i think it's a good basketball song yeah. but marco was like yo let's put it out so we compromised it's like fuck it let's put it on the physical and anybody who buy the physical will get that so that's how that came to be that's dope right there you uh the president of the i think what's that the new york chapter of the recording academy yeah yeah the organization that puts on the grammys i'm the president of new york it's been that's a dope, cool. dope privilege to do that for how'd sure. that come about you know a lot of people don't know that if you are artist, if you have X amount of credits, you got to have 12 credits. Uh, or artists or anything in the music industry, you yeah. can join the academy. You know what I mean? You can join. It ain't no fucking Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. Yo, I got 12. If you put an album out with 12 songs on it, that's 12 credits. And that's enough. You pay your $150 that motherfuckers spend at Starbucks. And... And you become a member of the academy. It's just that simple. So I became a member some years ago. I learned about all of the other shit that the Recording Academy did outside the Grammys. And that's what really made me stay. I found out how much money they give away to people that's in need. I found out how much advocacy they do at, at you know, at, in Washington and for songwriters and for people's, you know, to get their, you know, streaming rates and all types of shit, right? 
And I was like, yo, this shit is dope. It's doper than just, like, the Grammys is dope, but the shit that they do 364 days is dope, yeah. too. Yeah. And that's what made me stick around and shit. And I just kind of built my name up and started yeah. working and doing different initiatives. And, yeah. um, you know, I got slated for the ballot, and I got voted in. It's, it's a super blessing. You being a mentor and a mogul, is there anybody that, you know, has been a mentor to you or any mentors that when you I look up to? When I was younger, I didn't have any mentors. Mm. But... In my older years, I shouted out Sway. Sway is like a big homie and mentor to me. I talk to Sway about outside of media shit, real life shit. We text. Um, my brother Clark Kent taught me a lot about the music business. You know what I'm saying? Like him being an OG and him having experience and shit. So those are two people that I look to as mentors. And my man Kill Ripkin. You know what I'm saying? Me and Kill used to be in the group together. He's a little older than me, but not by much. But he's somebody who I look at. And I look to for guidance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He know me. He know my heart. You know what I'm saying? I know him. I know his heart. He's somebody that always, he keep it a buck with me. You know what I'm saying? Like no matter what. So those are some of the people that I consider mentors to me. You also, I want to I wanna get over there before we get out of here. You also did a podcast, I want to say, is what's that, Hard to Earn? Yeah, the Hard with to Earn podcast. Bonsu, Bonsu yeah. Thompson. With, with my guy, Bonsu. Yeah, we, that shit has grown. We got a big announcement, actually. I don't know when this is going to drop, but we got an announcement to close out 2023. Well, for the people that don't know about that podcast, I believe y'all like revisit classics and things like that. You so know it's an album it. review show. We do cla we do new albums as mm -hmm. well. It's like, so somebody dropped some new shit. Like we did Scissors album this year. Mm -hmm. Um, we did the Killer Mike album this year. So we'll review the albums. Bonsu comes from the magazine space. He's a writer, right? So he was editor-in-chief at The Source and wrote at XXL. So he has that music journalist pedigree. I obviously am a rapper and a songwriter. I got gold records. I got platinum records on other artists, Billboard number one hits. So we both come from a different space, but with enough pedigree to say the shit that we say. It ain't just... We talking out fucking side our ass. We are actual professionals in this shit. Yeah. So we we review new albums and we 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 rate them. We rate the songs one from one to ten. Classic albums we do on anniversaries. So we'll do a ten year anniversary of fifteen to twenty. We about to do the Wu Tang album Thirty Six Chambers. That's gonna be crazy for the thirty year anniversary. We doing that live in New York City to close out this month too. I'm gonna have to fly off for that one. Now listen, anytime you in the town, that, yeah. Anytime you in the town, you know we gonna I'm gonna take care of you. What do you, uh, who's some of you like the new artists? My last question for you, like what's some of the new artists, man, today? And uh, like, you know what I'm saying? That you say like, they got some motion, you know what I'm saying? Like whether it's like, you know, the NY drill, Chicago drill, mm -hmm. Detroit scene, like who you feel like right now got it, is really yeah, shining. It's a lot of shit. I like Simba a lot. I think Simba's dope. Yeah. Um, I like Lady London. I think she's fire. Um, I like, um, I like, it's this kid named Sandy Benjamin. He's still really, really, like, emerging, but he's just, he's super talented to me. Yeah. Um, I like Buddy. Uh, some people say he knew, some people, you know, I think he's still, like, coming up and shit. Uh, I like the kid Jid, J-I-D, from the Dreamville side. I like Boss from Dreamville. I like Kaz from Dreamville. Um, Rhapsody, she's not really new, new like that, but, you know, she's still, she's still doing her thing. Yeah. Um, Nick Grant, I think Nick Grant is dope. A lot of dope, a lot of dope talent out there, yo. Yeah, a lot of dope talent out so there. They definitely got a future in this game. Oh, for sure. They doing, they doing the things. They they making that. You know what I mean? They leaving a mark. They building a they path mm. to to do this shit and have a career. And careers are so different now. You can have a career in hip hop, crazy now, and you, you don't one. never have to be a superstar. You don't never have to have a radio smash. You can have a career 20, 10, 20 years. You know what you I'm feel saying? Like, do you feel like these days it's better to put out? a hit song or EP versus a full album? I think it depends on the artist. And and what I when I say that, I think that depends on who your base is. Do you have a base that's an album fan base or do you have a base that just consume shit that as it comes? Because if they want more, then drop more. You know what I'm saying? And if you if you're looking for superstardom, then try to make a hit. But if you got a bass that listen to an album, sit 30, 40 minutes and really go, then make albums and feed that bass. But you got to you have the opportunity now with research and algorithm and all that bullshit. But you can also tap into exactly who your bass is and just cater to them. Well, there was guys like <clears throat> there was guys like 
Fetty Wap that when, you know, he dropped that Trap Queen, they wanted more, but he still just kept pushing that song. Well, he, he pushed that for a minute until it really blew. Yeah. But then he came with like five or more. He came with RGF yeah. Island. Yeah. You know, he started coming with the uh, My Way shit. You know, he started really knocking them out, but they were hits. Yeah. That's he didn't he just bring, with. he didn't bring no fucking album. He just, they wanted it so bad that anything he dropped after he that just was going crazy. They was ready for him. And then eventually he did put it all together on the album but yeah. yeah he came with after Trap Queen was like you said RGF Island and My yeah. Way and yeah. all that shit uh, Monty, all that shit like he just he had one of the most interesting careers I've seen in a while Right. He came out the gate like like it took a long time to was get trap out of New York or New Jersey. Out of Jersey. Jersey it took right? a long yeah. time to get Trap Queen going but they believed in it and they stuck yeah. with it and once that shit went he came back to back to back I think it was five or six chart topping joints like crazy and then he could never find that thunder again now you fucking doing time fucking crazy <laughs> come on shit bro. crazy he said one of the greatest things that never happened uh, like one of the greatest right. artists that never like ever got to really happen because he was on his way yeah yeah he man. was fucking on his way why go even put just i mean i don't know what the case was yeah to me hey man Free, free fatty, wild, free fatty. Man. You know what I'm saying? Unless he, unless he, unless he harm babies or some shit. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't fuck with. Bush Icey said he done wrote a song every day since he been. In oh, jail. you know when he come out? He said he's got. A, he said he's got probably equivalent to about five, six albums ready that he's written. Remember so that's far. what Pac. Remember that's how Pac was. That's you how know Pac what I'm saying? Was. That's how Pac was. And he he came said it's the clearest I ever been. He said no smoking, no nothing. He no said drinking. this the clearest my mind has ever Just been. Eating that bro. motherfucking jail applesauce. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Boo Shiesty, man. Shout free, Shiesty. Hey, free Shiesty, man, for real. Free Thug too, man. Free Thug, free Thug, Jeffrey, free man. Free Slime, man. Fuck going on he out here, man. a little chunky. You seen him? Yeah, he's eating more than the applesauce. He's eating yeah. more than the <laughs> he applesauce. He's fucking with the whole tray. He got some, <laughs> he even got a little chunky on us, but I'm glad to see like that he healthy. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, he's sure. got his health. You right, know, that's, right. that's, that's his healthy weight on him, you know? So. And sometimes when you're not smoking and drinking and shit, because that shit keep you moving so much that you just put on weight if you slow your metabolism down. So yeah. he not running around doing all the shit he was doing, so he might just be putting away from that. Or he might be fucking with the bologna sandwiches. He might be really fucking with <laughs> I'm fucking sure with him. they looking out for him. I'm sure he getting some shit in there. He, yeah, he, at least getting Chick-fil-A, right? He getting Chick-fil-A yeah, or yeah, something least. like on the way to court that morning or something. Yeah. They might bring it to him and little let pretty, play. Little pretty CO and shit. Yeah, yeah. Bring, yeah. Do, do your shit. Hey, man, come on. To bring her, that's still, some Houston's or something. Hey, man. to her, that's still a celebrity. Like, hold on, sure. man. He ain't do nothing shit. Bigger than a celebrity. He's thug, bro. He's thug, thug is bro. like... Uh, like a modern day iconic, like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He's he's a big deal. Yeah. Pause. I, I I I fuck with Thug, man. I, I really do. They was talking about it this morning on the news. They said somebody's. They was like they were comparing him. I forgot who it was. It was Thug and somebody, and they was like, man, bigger than Thug. Like Thug is big. Nah, man. It really is. Pause again. Pause. Yeah, for real. <laughs> thug. Nah, for sure. He's he's one of those like he. You think about Thug and Future, they birth like all enemigos. They birth all of this young, this new shit that's off their tree. That's off their family tree, yo. Atlanta definitely goes crazy with the music scene. They also, uh, that's also what, home of 21 Savage. Right. That's, that's the home of quite a few Gucci Mane. You yeah, know what I'm saying? The yeah, whole 1017 sure. camp. For sure. You know what I mean? For sure, for sure. Yeah, ATL is the new, it's like the new metropolis. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't, I'm a New Yorker and, and I, be, I be fucking sitting here lying. I, don't, I didn't come here to sit here and lie to you. If I said that Atlanta didn't dominate the space, crazy. It came to my mind. So they were saying this morning on the news that Lil Uzi's a bigger artist than Young Thug. Mm. What you think about that? Let me think about that. Lil think, Uzi. Yeah, Lil Uzi is bigger. Is a Thug. bigger. Yeah, is a bigger artist than Thug. I think he's yeah. I think he's had bigger records. Yeah. I think he's had bigger records. So it, it really it's nuanced shit. Come Thug on, is. Man. We talking about Thug here, man. Thug, Thug is the most. He's influential. He got. He got. But shit. So do Uzi. Honestly. Uzi got well, a fucking tribe of, yeah, you know what I mean? his fan base yeah. is crazy, Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. He got, because you know why? His fan base is fucking diverse as hell. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure. saying thugs, thug isn't, you know what I'm saying? But he sold all of us up. He got all, he got all the niggas, for sure. Mm -hmm. Probably some other genres of people, you know? But <laughs> I, I feel like it's probably limited to what 
Uzi has done and going yeah. around like people fucking with him all over the world. Nah, Uzi is he's yeah he's a he's a rock star. You yeah, know what I mean? He's yeah. a rock star. His shit is his shit is far beyond the walls of just hip hop. You yeah. know what I mean? I fuck with Uzi too. Yeah, I fuck with Uzi too. I fuck with Uzi. I like yeah. Uzi. Hey man, listen, I actually had uh, I had talked shit about the pink tape. I think the pink tape he had just dropped. I was like, man, I just felt like he could have came harder. But then I went back and paused. Uh, you know, I went back. <laughs> I, I went back. You know, and I listened to it again. I was like, okay, this shit right here really go on. It's some shit on there. It's, it's not. It's not. There. It's not. I want. You know what I mean? It's not great, but it's some shit on there. It's some shit on there for sure. Yeah. Uh, we does. need that love is rage Uzi though. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. We need that love is rage Uzi. But I fuck with Uzi. Uzi I is if he dope. Gonna do some shit with like Playboy artists. Cardi on there. What if he gonna throw some play some Cardi on there with him? Because he always talking about that nigga. Cardi another one too, yo. He got a nice bass. No, oh, you know what? You know what Cardi does? Now pause. That was a crazy. You know pause. what Cardi? You know what Cardi does? <laughs> He comes out rare moments. Mm -hmm. You don't know when you're gonna see him. That's a fact. He's kept this mysterious. He got that mystique for sure to himself that sells to the world. Like people can't wait. Oh shit, Playboy Cardi coming! Ain't no telling when we gonna see him again. And when he do them festivals, them motherfucking mosh pits be came, going he crazy. Came out, he came out with Travis. I think they had just did SoFi together. Oh yeah, he, yeah, did yeah. He come out at SoFi. That's crazy. Oh, I, I think he came in. No, that I'm was the same night as the Lauren show. So I, it's mad, you know, that because they both, the venues are right next to each other. So it's mad people going to SoFi. I'm like, what's that for SoFi? I'm like, Travis. I'm like, damn, I would have went to that. And it's mad people going to the to the Fuji shit. So yeah, yeah LA is crazy. No, man. Long, what I was saying was Travis had just did a show and he brought out Playboy Cardi on stage. You know what I'm saying? So. And him coming out for just even that rare moment, crowd going crazy. Because you never know when you're going to see him. He, he yeah. brings a different energy to for where sure. people about to fucking damn near pass out. Seeing Playboy Cardi because his music and his cadence goes, yeah, yeah, goes yeah, crazy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know? Yeah, it's super high energy shit. Is there anything, before we get out, is there anything you want the fans to know, the viewers to know, your fam to know, what to be on the lookout for, and what's next for Torrey? Um, more music. I promise the yeah. audience more music. So I'm no no more no more fucking music droughts. Um, thank everybody, yo. I think I'm super grateful to be in this position because all of this shit for me, Road Talk Sharp, is the bonus. All I wanted was about five pairs of Jordans, a gold chain. You know what I mean? Be able to yeah. go fucking buy McDonald's every day. Yeah. I didn't want much. All of this shit is the bonus, bro. <laughs> yeah. All this yeah. extra shit, the accolades, the respect from my peers, opportunities to sit down and chop it up with real ones. Yeah. All this shit is extra, bro. So I'm living yeah. in, I'm living an extra time right now. So I appreciate all of it. Um, more music. Fuck with the podcast. Fuck with the radio shows. Fuck with the acting. Fuck with a real one. I'm here. Hey, man, we appreciate you for coming in coming and fucking with us, man, and sharing your insight Good of up. just what's going on today. When I come down to that New York level one, I'm tapping in, man. Nah, for I'm sure, for fuck sure. With you, fuck you with know. me in New York. Hopefully, man, before you get up out of here, we can link up, have a drink or something, man. You know, go chop it up. You know, you got a new friend, man, with you. With it. You dig? We gonna, we gonna do it for real and not <laughs> Yo, for play. she said, aww. <laughs> we better knock it off. The Sharp Tank. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. Hey, Donnie. Shoot us out the motherfucking gym.